Today I'm going to show you how to create a cutscene using level sequences. Here's an example of what we're going to make. First, we're going to create a box trigger. We're going to use this box trigger to determine whether we're in the proximity of the switch and whether or not we can use a specific input. With our box trigger selected, go into your blueprints and open up your level blueprint. Now we're in our level blueprint, we're going to create a begin overlap event for our box trigger and an end overlap event for our box trigger. We're going to use these to determine whether our boolean is true or false. So we've created a variable, name this on slash off. Make sure it's a boolean here. Drag this in. So after the begin overlap, Set your boolean to true, and after end overlap, set it to false. Now after these, we can create a print string. These are great for debugging, so it's checking if things are working right. So change this to on. Copy and paste it. change this one to off and then we can change the colour down here. So when I enter the box trigger in the top left hand corner it should print on and when I leave off. So that's that working. So go back into our level blueprint. So in our level blueprint, if we search for the E key, and create a branch. And get a variable here. We can now say, when we overlap our box trigger, it'll set our variable to true. And if it's true, when you press E, it'll play our animation. But if we leave the box trigger, it will set our variable to false. So when we press our E key, nothing will play. So if we leave our level blueprint, go up to cinematics and add level sequence. I'll name mine lever. This will then bring up this timeline. Here you can add your static meshes to animate them. You can do this by going to track, actor to sequence, and then search for the mesh. So switch. Now we can animate them. You can do this by adding keyframes to the timeline. So if we click S, it'll create time, it'll create a keyframe, move this along. You can move this down, S again to create a keyframe. It's now animated. Let's move this along. So when we play it, it'll stop in the right place. So if we go back to our level blueprint, 
We search for event begin play. Then search for create levels level sequence player, sorry. Select our level sequence. We can now promote this to a variable inside our le in our inside our level blueprint. So change the name for this to lever. And then go back to our input. Drag this out, get lever. Search for play. And this will play our animation. So now, if you press E, if our variable is true, it should play our level sequence. So I'll just compile and save this. Click play. So we've entered our box trigger, set our variable to true. So when we click E, it'll play our animation. But as you can see, the animation returns to its original state. We can fix this. If we go back into our level sequence, right click on the timeline, go to properties. When finished, we want it to keep its state. So if we go back, press E, it keeps its state. So if we go back into our level blueprint, so if we now search for flip-flop, here, yeah. this will determine what happens on your first key press. So on A, and what happens on your second. So on our second, we want our animation to return to its original state. We can do this by searching for play reverse and this will reverse our animation on our second key press. So if we go back. So press E and then press E again. It will return back to its original state. When we press our lever, we want it to appear like it's activating something. So if we go over here, we can see our platform if we do the same again, create a level sequence. I'll name this platform. We can now animate this. So if we add it to our track, act to sequence, search for your mesh. So mine's platform. We can press S, create a keyframe, move it to say 60, move this up, S again, and then we can highlight these, control C, control V, and it will return back to its original state. So now if we go into our level blueprint, do the same again. So create level sequence player. Search for platform, promote this to a variable I'll name mine platform. And off this, we're going to search for play looping. So this will mean when you press A, It'll play your animation, but loop it, so it'll keep going. 
and then get our platform again. And then on our second key press, we want to pause it. So this will pause it mid animation. So now when you press E, it'll play our lever animation, play our platform animation looping, and then on B, reverse our lever, but pause our platform. And it'll keep doing this every time we press E. So if I compile and save this, play. So E, the player animation, so you can see it looping. And then press E again, it'll pause it. Now you can see it pauses for a bit at the bottom. This is because if we go back into our level sequence, we haven't stopped the animation on the last keyframe. So that should fix it. There we go. So now we want to create a cutscene to tell our player the platform is activated. So if we go to cinematics, add level sequence again, I'll name mine cutscene. It'll bring up our timeline. If we click this camera icon here, it'll create a camera that you can control for your cutscene. So if we click this camera icon here, it'll bring us out of the camera and then we can control it and place it in our scene. So if I just select my first person character and then select my camera again, I just bring up my view viewport. So I can now set my first shot up. Just move my camera back a bit. So I'm happy with that for my first shot. So if I click S, on my keyboard, I'll create a keyframe, I'll just move my timer across and then set up my second shot. There we go. Click S again, and now you can see my camera moving. I'll just bring the end point up to 120 here because that's where my uh, platform animation starts playing, so it won't just end on that final frame, it'll give the player some time to see all the animations play. So if we go into my blueprint here and then open up my level blueprint, we just have to create another create level sequence player. Select your cutscene, promote to variable, and I'll just name mine cutscene. So if I get my cutscene, Drag off that, search for play, and now between my play looping for my platform and me playing the cutscene, I'm going to put a delay. I'll set this to about half a second, and all this will do is create a buffer between my animations playing and my cutscene playing so the player can see the lever animation play before we cut straight to a cutscene so it's not too jarring for the player. So now when we overlap our trigger box it'll set our boolean to true 
So this means when we press E, if that boolean which is true, which it is, if we are inside the trigger box near our lever, it'll play our lever animation, play our platform, it'll loop it, sorry, delay for half a second, and then play our cutscene. And if we, click, if we press E again, it will reverse our lever animation and pause our platform. So if uh, play, press E, close the animation, and there we go.